You are listening to Uranium Spotlight on Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. Brought to you by Pierpoint Uranium Group, your exploration partner in the most prolific areas of Canada's Athabasca Basin. With a collaborative investment model on district-scale projects and validation from industry leaders Cameco, Orano, and ISO Energy, Pierpoint is investing in Canada's uranium future. And now your host, Chris Frostad. This week on Uranium Spotlight, the spot price shows softness while Niger rejects Orano's closure. Tech, SMRs, and nuclear fuel continue to spar, and Kazatomprom releases Q3 results. October saw a subdued spot market, with transaction volume hitting the year's lowest point. There were 23 reported spot transactions, of which 16 involved U308, reflecting a shift to prompt delivery requests as buyers remain cautious. Conversion services, however, were a key area of activity, with six deals reported totaling 252,000 kilograms of U as UF6, indicating strong conversion demand relative to U308. In the forward markets, buyers held back despite price concessions from sellers and in-person discussions at the NEI IUFS in Kansas City. The uranium spot price edged downward, ending October at $81 per pound U308, before dipping further to $78.50 by the end of last week. This recent price softness aligns with restrained demand, but also underscores buyers' reluctance to lock in volumes as prices hover below the $80 threshold. Utility term contracts showed modest gains with eight awards in October. Notably, six were for U308, one for UF6, and one for enrichment services. Several utilities engaged in off-market term contracts, such as a U.S. utility finalizing terms for up to 1.4 million pounds U308 equivalent, pointing to sustained mid- and long-term demand among utilities despite recent spot market inactivity. Additionally, the conversion and UF6 markets observed heightened activity and price pressure, with conversion rates even surpassing recent U308 spot prices for the first time. This reflects a tightening in conversion capacity and underscores a broader trend where utility buyers may prioritize securing conversion services as they strategize for future supply. These developments suggest that while spot demand is subdued, structural factors, and especially conversion demand, continue to drive strategic buying decisions in term markets, balancing near-term price reductions with long-term supply needs. Everywhere in the uranium and nuclear industries, discussions are buzzing around the role of reactors, especially small modular reactors, or SMRs, in powering AI data centers. SMRs are being hailed as a transformative technology that could reshape how we build nuclear power, streamlining construction timelines, reducing budget constraints, and addressing land use concerns. In previous episodes, we've shared our view on SMRs. While promising, these reactors may not be built quick enough or consume enough fuel at the scale needed to significantly impact uranium prices in the near term. Realistically, SMRs alone may only shift uranium prices by a few dollars over the next couple of years. That said, we still think this is a conversation worth having. The more people discuss nuclear energy and the critical role of the nuclear fuel cycle in carbonization, the better it is for raising awareness and building support. Since we first talked about SMRs, major tech companies like Google and Amazon have shown interest in the nuclear sector, with agreements to source nuclear power from companies like Keros Power, Dominion Energy, and Talon Energy Corp. This week, however, one of the most high-profile deals, the agreement between Talon Energy and Amazon to power a planned data center next to Talon Susquehanna Nuclear Power Plant in Pennsylvania, was struck down by federal regulators. That deal would have directed nearly all of the output from a conventional reactor to Amazon's new facility. Despite that setback, there were also positive developments. Amazon and Dominion signed a fresh agreement to provide energy for data centers, and Constellation, which has a supply deal with Microsoft's data centers, released a three-year timeline for the reopening of the historic Three Mile Island, which is set to operate under a new name. And it's not just tech giants getting involved. We're also seeing private equity firms with an interest in uranium and nuclear energy spurred on by publicity around AI data centers and nuclear ambitions of big tech. All of this speaks to the growing relevance of uranium and uranium equities as an investment in the long term. However, significant questions remain. Will future data centers and their SMRs manage to clear regulatory hurdles? And will they require enough uranium to make a dent in demand and impact prices? For now, these are open questions, but the landscape is evolving rapidly and we'll continue to watch it closely. 
Following up on last week's segment, we're seeing new developments around Arano, the French state-owned nuclear fuel company, which has faced ongoing challenges with uranium production and export in Niger. After halting production at its Somar mine due to the complications arising from Niger's recent coup, there may now be a path forward, though it's a complex one. To recap, Arano halted operations at Somar because of mounting difficulties after Niger's military junta took control last June. Sanctions from neighboring countries and Western powers followed, significantly disrupting Arano's supply chain and, crucially, their access to sulfuric acid, a vital component in the uranium extraction process. Beyond production obstacles, the geopolitical turmoil has severely restricted Arano's ability to export uranium from Niger to its key international clients, including France, where it's essential for the nation's extensive nuclear reactor fleet. This week, the Niger's military government signaled an objection to Orano's production halt. Interestingly, rather than insisting on the original plan to export uranium via Benin, now complicated by security and closed borders, they proposed buying close to 500,000 pounds of uranium from Orano directly. This proposal could provide a temporary resolution, at least for the uranium stockpiled since 2023. Currently, about 2.3 million pounds of uranium mined in 2023 and 2024 sits in limbo intended for export through Benin and now stranded due to border closures. Arano has lobbied Niger's authorities to consider alternative routes, such as through Namibia, or even to facilitate direct shipments to France. So far, these efforts have been unsuccessful, reflecting a deepening impasse that continues to ripple through the uranium supply chain. What's more intriguing is Niger's apparent move to establish a more independent role in the uranium sector. The Nigerian government has set up a national uranium company, a state-owned entity launched in September. Their precise intentions remain uncertain, whether they aim to act as resellers, develop local mining capacity, or even fuel future reactors, only time will tell. The geopolitical landscape here is dynamic, unpredictable, and increasingly impactful on uranium markets worldwide. Investors will be watching closely as Niger's intentions unfold, potentially reshaping supply chains and influencing uranium prices amid shifting alliances and policies. As the uranium market grows more volatile with these developments, it's clear that global supply sources are becoming as much a matter of political strategy as they are of raw production capability. Kazatomprom, the world's largest uranium producer, has reported a strong third quarter for 2024, producing just under 13 million pounds, up 16% from the same period in 2023, and surpassing its guidance. This rebound marks a return to form following a weaker second quarter, indicating that Kazatomprom is back on track with its production targets. However, challenges remained. Ongoing issues with procuring sulfuric acid, a crucial input for uranium extraction, continue to impact some of its mines and may persist. This constraint is compounded by high demand in Kazakhstan's agricultural sector, where sulfuric acid is vital for fertilizer production. As one of the world's largest wheat producers, Kazakhstan faces competing demands for this resource between agriculture and mining. Meanwhile, Kazakhstan is advancing its nuclear power ambitions. Following a national referendum where 71% voted in favor of a reactor, the government has created a commission to explore the project, aiming to form an international consortium for its construction. With Kazakhstan supplying 40% of the world's uranium, this domestic shift signals the potential for a more self-sustaining nuclear industry. As the global supply-demand gap for uranium grows, Kazakhstan may find itself making strategic choices about its uranium allocations. Will it prioritize its own needs and those of close allies like China and Russia, or continue supplying Western nations with major nuclear fleets? As demand rises and the market divides along geopolitical lines, Kazakhstan's decisions will likely influence the global uranium landscape, affecting both near-term prices and long-term supply security for nuclear-dependent countries worldwide. And that wraps up your Uranium Spotlight coverage for this week. For more news and events from the world of uranium, please tune in next week to Uranium Spotlight. You've been listening to Uranium Spotlight, your weekly podcast dedicated to delivering the latest news and events shaping the uranium fuel market and its critical role in the global energy landscape. Brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group. PurePoint actively operates a portfolio of advanced uranium projects in the world's richest uranium district and has established partnerships with industry leaders. While our passion for this subject is undeniable, it's essential to clarify that the information presented here is not investment advice. Instead, 
Our goal is to offer an unbiased and comprehensive review of recent events that could impact uranium prices. Join us again next Tuesday for Uranium Spotlight.